Welcome back to Small Arms Firearms, where these are the only guns the, uh, the ATF doesn't care about. Today, on Small Arms Firearms, we go over everything EDC. We're going to be comparing a few pistols, including the new Daniel Defense H9, along with some custom versions of P365s. We want to see, out of this high-end level, everyday carry pistols, which one is going to be best for you, which ones perform the best, which ones do you think we could even use in competition shooting, perhaps. IDPA is known for being defensive pistol. Maybe some of these will work for it. I'm going to preface the video starting out with we use the exact same ammo across all of these pistols. And in a few videos coming up in the future, you're going to see some more competition level guns that we're going to compare um, next to just standard full size pistols. And we're going to continue to use the exact same hand loaded ammo, 115 grain berries plated bullets running at about a power factor of 125, 126. These are great for USPSA competition and the minor power factor. Not only are we using the same ammo for each one, we're always going to have a printed out USPSA regulation size A zone, just on a piece of paper, and it's gonna be out at seven yards. And the requirement is every shot on high speed has to be in that box. I don't want people just throwing rounds all over the place just so they could pull the trigger as fast as possible with not actually aiming. That's not fair. Some guns have better triggers than others, but you maybe can't control it better. So we're going to have that as much of a control as we can for our testing. We're gonna start with the Daniel Defense H9. There's been a lot of bad news on the internet and videos on YouTube that I've seen in the last couple months where failure to go into battery, failure to lock back on the last round, um, just issues left and right, along with keyholing right off the bat, even at like seven yards. I know Daniel Defense is working to get those problems fixed. It seems that they have for some of the customers that were having those issues, but for a pistol that's selling for $1,200, $1,300, it's not always great to hear. As far as the pistol itself, the ergonomics on it, they feel great. It feels like a slightly smaller 1911. It really does. And with that, you can get a great grip on it, at least for me. It seems to fill my hand better than most of the micro compacts out there without a custom lower grip module. Now, if you've been reading about the Daniel Defense H9, you know that it was designed to have a very low bore axis. That was the reason why they started designing this to help with muzzle flip when you're shooting it. The idea is it's supposed to help you bring the muzzle in your sight picture back to zero where you were before you pulled the trigger, allowing you faster follow-up shots. Does it work? A little, yeah. It, the recoil impulse does feel to come more straight back at you than up and back. Is it a significant difference compared to the other guns we tested here today? No, it's not. You can feel it and it feels smooth to shoot. I will give it that. There are just too many other issues with it for me to have this higher up on the list. The first problem is the trigger. Somebody's got to make the H9 look good besides Jan. He sounds like a sales rep. <laughs> <laughs> but it's weird because everyone says, go to the reset. Go to the reset, then you hit it again, right? So don't let the reset doesn't make sense. It just is squishy some parts. It's hard to feel the break necessarily. The reset is almost impossible to feel. And then if you reset the trigger a little too far to where you re-engage the safety, then it's gritty safety. I know Daniel Defense wanted more of a 1911 style slide straight back trigger instead of a pivot hinge trigger or whatever that you see on basically every striker fired gun. And after shooting the H9 for a while, I'm starting to see why they all use a pivot hinge trigger because the trigger sucks on this thing. It's just not good. How do you feel? It, it, for, it's hard for me with the iron sights because with 
you know, my vision, it makes you really wonky. It, it feels like the recoil impulse is very much kind of straight back. It's kind of similar to the alien in that regard. Um, it, it really makes a difference if you don't let the trigger fully reset, right? Yeah, and I was trying to do that, but being unfamiliar with it, I'm not sure whether I was doing it or not. It's kind of a strange pistol, it really is. I mean, Everything about it is strange. Yeah. <laughs> the, you definitely can tell the low bore axis, though. You absolutely can. I just wish they put a different trigger in it. Yeah. And who knows, here in the next year, you might see aftermarket triggers getting produced for it. It's, it's not a big deal as long as you don't reset the trigger fully, right? Because then yeah. you've got that short, that short trigger pull of the, the soft recoil. That's really the, the pistol itself, right? Oh, yeah. But if, you, if you let the trigger go, then you're just going to be slapping that, that, that safety, right? It's just, that's, that's the problem with it. Now, as far as the other issues that they've been talking about online, we didn't have any keyholing. I didn't have any failure to go into battery. I believe Steve did once to where he just had to kind of click it forward a little bit and then it was able to fire. Uh, we did have two instances where the pistol failed to lock back on the last round. You went high speed on this? No, no. You're right. Now, I, I don't want to knock it too much for that because that could simply be the fact that I was using minimum power factor uh, ammunition. But that makes me tend to believe you don't want to use this if you're doing IDPA. If it can't lock back on that last round, I don't know if that's going to cause you any issues in your competition for IDPA. I currently in USPSA don't use any mags that have a lockback, so it doesn't bother me too much. I hope that Daniel Defense can iron out all these kinks, either with a Gen 2 or start offering some kind of replacement parts for the current owners of Gen 1s. I do know they have great customer service, just give them a chance, at least in six months. Our second pistol up on our EDC shootout is going to be just a stock P365 XL. Now the XL will have the Holosun EPS carry red dot on it. After shooting all of these other EDC guns over the last couple weeks, getting footage here and there, carrying the Shalotech Flex macro size lower, this gun feels tiny. And I was carrying the 365, the first one when it came out, right off the bat. And moving up to the XL felt so much better. And now that we kind of have more of these guns that are not on the micro compact side anymore, they are on just the compact side. We're getting to that point, especially with the Shalotech. It's it feels tiny going back to the P365XL. Where this one succeeds is, it is thin, but the stippling on the lower, this is the laser etched lower, feels phenomenal. It doesn't feel like it wants to jump out of my hand as much as some of the other pistols I shoot. It seems to stay fairly well planted for how small this thing really is. I do prefer the 3.7 inch barrel versus the 3.1. It does have a little more slide mass, so, it doesn't flip and is as snappy as something like the regular P365. In my experience, if I'm going to shoot a P365 XL, I would much rather just slap a macro, X macro, integrated comp upper on top of it. It's going to be the same length, it's going to be the same size, the barrel is 3.1 inch instead of 3.7, but that integrated comp helps so much when you're shooting one of these, that it's worth it in my opinion. If you can find, if you already have a P365 XL and you can find um, a complete upper on eBay or Reddit or wherever you wanna buy a used one, it's worth it to get that X macro upper and take off the 3.7 inch barrel and put that on. Or go with the Shalo Tech route or Parker Mountain Machine. I just, there's so many options out there, but if it's not in the budget, the P365 XL comes in fourth place for this video because it just still works so well. Our next gun on the list is another P365XL, but with a lot more money involved. This one has the Parker Mountain Machine dedicated compensator and barrel built into the upper. This one shoots phenomenally flat for the size of it. Now, in my previous videos, you know how I feel about the Icarus grip module. It is a really expensive, comfortable grip with basically no stippling that can keep the pistol in your hand. Even the integrated thumb throttle, gas pedal, whatever you want to call it, 
it's kind of pointless if your thumb just slides right off of it like it's greased. Right, it does. It's an integrated one. Well, it's an integrated one, but this is one where your thumb kind of slips off of it. Because on this one, it's kind of like a defined ledge. Okay. And your, your thumb is, is on it. And this is, uh, I don't know, this is a little slippery for me, though. Yeah. So I don't know if, I kind of like the G10 on this one a little better. And I'm glad I'm not the only one because we had three other shooters for the first time ever using it. And they all agreed that the ergos feel nice in the hand. It fits the hand very well, but there's not texture on that anodized aluminum to keep it in your hand that it's too slippery. As far as the compensator on this upper, we finally got it on high speed and it works. It just flat out works. And it seems like it works significantly better than the integrated compensators you see on an X Macro and on the Shalo Tech. How much? We couldn't really quantify because everyone after shooting it said that the flex grip module from Shalo Tech was a much better grip module. More on that in a little bit after we get done with the next review. And the final pistol for the EDC shootout is the Shalo Tech pre-built again. But this time we added three more shooters to our list to get their opinions and compare them between all the pistols that we're going to shoot in this video. So the XL is my warm weather carry pistol. I'm a small guy, I'm skinny. The Shalo Tech, which is basically a compact size pistol, just prints too much on me when I'm wearing shorts and a lightweight t-shirt. It can get hot here in the summer and I don't like wearing pants every day or a heavy thick shirt just so I can carry a bigger pistol. I even own uh, a belly band by some company, I'll, I'll have to link it below if I can find it, to where it has a strap on the neoprene belly wrap to where you can put your normal EDC appendix carry holster in it and then strap that down to you. It stays put, it works well, it doesn't print any worse than just carrying the holster on its own. And it really makes me more comfortable throughout the day when it's a hundred and something degrees outside. The winner of today's current video and EDC comparison, again, is the Shalo Tech pre-built. I'm not going to go into full detail again. The only thing with the Shalo Tech that we seem to not like as much really wasn't Shalo Tech's fault. It was the trigger in the FCU of, that Sig Sauer makes. Potentially upgrading it to the M-Carbo trigger would increase the performance on the Shalo Tech even more and make even a further gap of which one we would choose to carry every day. Not bad. I was expecting the trigger to break earlier. That's so everyone has. Everyone's been kind of like, what's going on here? It's not firing. Yeah. That's because his trigger is that imp carbo is it's not the best. No, his is. This is just a stock trigger. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's so an that's why, trigger. Yeah, this one resets better and it's just there's not a squishiness to it I got you. on the it's, carbo. I was expecting it to go, so like hold up, hold up. So what do you think so like you seem to shoot both of them about the same speed? Uh this one felt like it was jumping in my hands more because it was thinner. Yeah, but it's once I got it going, I didn't have problems with it. That one feels your hand better, so it seems a little bit more controllable. We thought exactly the same thing. Uh-huh. That it just fits better and you can control it more easily. Right. Now, with all that being said, everyone kind of had an iffy answer of why they like the flex more. It was just, it feels better in the hands. I feel like I can control it better with its thumb throttle gas pedal. But other than that, they both shoot really similar. And we kind of put it to the Parker Mountain Machine dedicated compensator was doing really all the work and that the Icarus grip module was actually probably hurting it more than anything. So, what did we do? Because my thought was, I feel like this upper with the integrated comp would make this an absolute game changer. Can, you, can we switch them over? Switch them over. Same for all those, right? Or maybe they change it and send it back no, I feel like if his upper was on this lower, right. that you have the ultimate P365. Oh. Because the, I, we've all kind of agreed the ergonomics on this are just better. Feel the best. Yeah. And they are wider. I don't know, will that just slide right on? It fills up your hand just that much better, and then the gas pedal helps out a lot. So I think if you have that integrated comp with that thing, 
Seems pretty simple. We just took Steve's upper with the Parker Mountain Machine Comp and stuck it on the Shalo Tech Flex. Guess what? It fits perfect. Now, without even describing anything about what we experienced, I'm just gonna play for you a couple clips of everyone shooting it for the first time. And you've seen in our other clips that we had, the response of someone shooting the P365XL or the Icarus or the Shalo Tech for the first time was, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Let's see what they think about the new monster we made. You gotta shoot this. <laughs> Feels good? It was like right there every time. So now we know we have created a monster, huh? <laughs> Jesus. Didn't move. <laughs> All right, you guys are going to want to try this. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was barely moving. It's just back on, did you feel it back on instantly? I was just, I was pulling the trigger as fast as I could. Yeah, and it's just right there every time. I was just looking at the target when the dot came back to the center, it's just bow, 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 bow. Yeah. Okay, so what do we, what do we have to buy? <laughs> you were all within like, it was like this big of a circle. Oh, nice. It was all on, just perfect. Yeah, that juice nice. Are you buying the frame already? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm writing down what I need. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have found the secret sauce. That is the best of both worlds. It, I, I can grip it, and the muzzle brakes seem to keep it down. Shot it very flat. How did it feel? It felt, I mean, for, a, for something that small. It didn't feel like an H9, though. <laughs> <laughs> H9 is better. For something that small and that, uh, and that bit, it doesn't move. It doesn't move, yeah. And it feels good in the hand. Yeah. Okay, so what we discovered was the Parker Mountain Compensator is doing a whole lot more than an integrated compensator does. And the Icarus frame is probably hurting it. The return to zero, no joke, feels almost like a competition full-size pistol. It shoots way better than my MNP 2.0 5-inch full-size striker-fired pistol. 
and it shoots better than a lot of people's guns that they run through competition, like with P320s. Granted, this has a compensator, so it puts you into the open division pretty much immediately. Now, this video isn't trying to prove that this can be a competition gun. It's just trying to show you that for an everyday carry, this thing's phenomenal. Yes, it's a little bit bigger than the X Macro, which is still smaller than a Glock 19 in width and in overall length and size, but while maintaining a return to zero, fast firing, soft shooting pistol that you can be confident in shooting anywhere. Again, the only limiting factor at this point for making it absolutely perfect with the sweet spot would be the M Carbo trigger. The stock trigger isn't bad, and with a few hundred more rounds down range, timing yourself from draw and shooting build drills left and right, I think you can understand and learn the reset and the trigger to where you'll be just as fast as if you probably had an M Carbo. So in conclusion, I can confidently say that all of the P365s that we tested here today are phenomenal for an everyday carry. I have hesitations being able to say that the H9 can perform reliably in the field when it's put to the test. I don't know yet. It's too new. It doesn't have enough rounds downrange across the country to be able to give you a cold hard fact on that, but it's $1,300. Go buy two P365XLs or buy an FCU and deck it out with a Parker Mountain Comp and a Shalotech Flex Lower. You can change the Flex Lower to whatever size you want, whether you're doing summer or warm weather or cold weather everyday carry. Or maybe you live in an environment like Florida where it's always gonna be a warm weather carry. I really wish there was footage like this before we went and spent hundreds to thousands of dollars on everyday carry gear, but that's what this is for. And whatever I couldn't find on the internet, I always wanna test on my own. Hence why I've done so much in-depth ballistic gel testing with 300 blackout subsonic defensive ammo. I need to know myself that it's gonna be effective. And if you think about it, just six years ago, we thought it was unheard of to have a micro compact be able to hold 12 plus one. Eight was about all you could get. And now we're up to 17 plus one with the X macro. Granted, it's a little bigger, I wouldn't call it a micro compact anymore, but the technology is evolving for everyday carry so well in the last 10 years. We're putting thumb throttles, gas pedals, and integrated compensators and dedicated compensators on these, and we have holsters that fit them all. It's a wondrous time for everyday carry, and I can't wait to see what they have in the next 10 years that makes me think that this video was crazy that we were falling in love with these pistols. So if you're looking for the flattest shooting EDC that I have ever come across, ever shot, it's the Flex Lower with their thumb throttle and the Parker Mountain Machine dedicated compensator. Now that's the XL size. You can get the smaller lower from Shalotech and you can get the smaller compensator and barrel from Parker Mountain. I can't say if that's gonna be snappier or not, maybe a little cause it's lighter weight and there's less mass to the gun and you're still shooting the same bullet. The one we tested, it's easy to conceal and it shoots amazing. There's no way around it. We all loved it. We're absolutely shocked at how much better it did than anything else on the table. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you guys. I love you all for stopping by and we're out. And I can heart felt that what back to the barn and around to have a small run on.